Hello, today we have Bruce Bauer, the interim chief financial officer of Gorilla Technology Group, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker GRRR. Bruce, welcome. Thank you, Craig. Pleasure to be here. As CFO, Bruce, how do you approach aligning Gorilla's financial strategy with its rapid growth and evolving market opportunities? Yes, so the most important thing is that we need cash in order to grow the business. So the priority has been to keep a, a large cash buffer, so a minimum of 15 million of unrestricted cash. That allows us to take on new contracts, and then it also allows us to have excess uh, to invest in new market opportunities, you know, so exploring uh, sales, marketing in new areas, and also spending on innovation. That cash reserve is quite large, more than $40 million, Bruce. What is your strategy for balancing capital allocation between growth initiatives, innovation, and shareholder returns? Yeah, so uh, we look at basically the business development pipeline. Uh, right now, it's over $1.5 billion. And we judge from that what we think are near-term potential wins and basically how much cash we have to set aside in order to win those contracts and deliver on them. Um, when, when we have $40 million in cash reserves, it, it's a little bit lower today, but about high 30s. Um, what we're thinking is that most of that will be allocated towards growth. And then uh, we have $6, six million dollar buyback allocated. And then the rest we're going to put into R&D. In the future, we'll keep the same discipline where the vast majority of it will go into growth. Anything excess will go first to innovation, to R&D, to keep the product portfolio growing. And then, you know, as and when, we'll allocate it to shareholder returns. Bruce, you also have substantial contract assets and financial assets. Now, how do you manage those to support your operational and strategic goals? Yeah, um, just to define them, contract assets really mean unbuilt revenue, and we're going to report them as such in the future. Uh, basically, we perform work. We recognize the revenue as we perform it. It goes into contract assets. What we're trying to do is really to bill as fast as possible. As soon as the milestones in our contracts permit us to bill, uh, that starts the, the cycle where that contract asset gets converted into cash. In terms of the financial assets, the, the vast majority of those financial assets have been and will continue to be guarantees in front of our customers. So, you know, the financial assets number will expand over time as we invest in new guarantees, you know, towards new contracts. Um, on the other hand, we like to keep it, uh, we like to smooth it and, and manage it down where possible because that releases cash that goes into the business. Uh, and that's actually the cycle we're in right now at the end of 2024, beginning of 2025. Gorilla's improvements, Bruce, in gross margin and operating profit are noticeable. How are you working to sustain and build on these achievements as you scale? So in terms of operating profit, uh, we're really seeing the operating leverage kick in where we have the infrastructure necessary to service double the, the business that we're doing now. So the key becomes really winning new contracts and then getting the gross margin up. In terms of the gross margin, we, we have a, a lot of financial discipline that we're now um, putting or, or reasserting into the contracts that we look at and that we win. So that in, includes you know, a revised rate card to make sure uh, that we're charging market rates, a revised uh, contracting approach where we have certain targets in terms of revenue size, you know, gross margin, et cetera, et cetera, that we expect to see out of contracts. Uh, and together, along with an improved product mix, you know, shifting towards software, this should keep our gross margins expanding. I want to turn now to that share buyback program, Bruce, $6 million share buyback program, undeniably reflecting confidence in Gorilla's valuation. How do you balance these initiatives with investments in future growth? Yes. So in September, we, we had up to $40 million of free cash, unrestricted cash. And we judged that we didn't need all of that in order to service new business. We also thought that the, the share price was quite undervalued and we wanted to send a message to the market that we weren't issuing new shares, rather we would prefer to buy them back. 
So that reflects confidence in the valuation being low and, and our, our prospects. Um, but basically, when we judge that the share price is low and also that it doesn't in any way compromise future growth in the business, that's when we allocated and that's when we will allocate in the future money to, to return to shareholders. Give us some of the key initiatives you've got going right now to optimize cash flow while maintaining that focus on scaling and, of course, innovation. It comes down to the, the discipline for how we manage existing contracts and new contracts. So for existing contracts, it means billing as soon as we can. Uh, those contract assets or unbilled revenue to turn that into, into billed revenue and then collecting on the receivables. It also means managing our payables, um, our prepayments and our payables on those contracts, you know, so that we get as much float as possible. For new contracts, we're really looking at two things. One is the timing of investment from our side. So obviously, if we can minimize or, or delay the cash going out from our side, and then also when we expect customers to, to pay us. The other thing is that we're looking at, at new initiatives basically to minimize the cash that goes out to service new contracts. One is, for instance, using surety bonds instead of cash guarantees. It costs a little bit more on the P&L, but it saves a tremendous amount of cash. Okay, Bruce, we have covered a lot of financial metrics in this interview. In your opinion, what are the most important indicators that investors should be monitoring to understand Gorilla's progress and potential? Yes, yeah, so, so the ones that you would monitor in, in any growing technology business, so it would be the, the growth metrics, and it would also be uh, the gross margin and the operating margin or the EBITDA margin. The last one that we pay a lot of attention to is cash flow, and this can be both free cash flow and then uh, operating cash flow as a percentage of EBITDA. In 2025, um, we expect, due to the release of some guarantees to our end clients, that our EBITDA to free cash flow or to operating cash flow conversion will be greater than 100%. Um, and that's the kind of, the, that means that the business is growing in a very cash generative fashion. So that's, that's what we like to focus on. Sounds compelling, Bruce. Thanks for explaining everything to us today. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, happy to, to talk about Gorilla anytime. <laughs>